one of the amazing things that the blood of Jesus Christ came to do for us is to remit us from sin. One amazing thing that the blood of Jesus Christ came to do for humanity is to remit us, is to pay the price for our sins, is to blot out the handwritings and the ordinances that were written against us. I mean, the blood wiped them away. I welcome you to Blood at Midnight, uh, another special night, another amazing night of insight, another amazing night of revelations, another amazing night of understanding, another amazing night of digging deep into the mystery that is in the blood. Can I hear you shout it aloud, my dear friends, seven hundred times? Now we know why we shout it. And if today is your first time of joining us on this medium, on this platform, we shout it seven hundred times because in John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus screamed the last time and said, it is finished, that was the last thing he said. Why did he say that the blood has come out of his body from seven places and he was too sure that the blood has accomplished its purpose, the blood has done its work, the blood has healed, the blood has changed stories, the blood is ready to work wonders. And he shouted, it is finished. I'd like you to begin to thank God again why you shout the blood of Jesus Christ seven times. Shout it seven times. That disease is finished. That evil manipulation is finished. That evil manipulator is finished. The conspirators are finished. It was finished for the Egyptians. I know the captivity, the slavery, the evil that has befallen you. They are finished. Shout the blood of Jesus. Keep shouting it. It shall come to pass. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And God told me, I, I say it often, it shall also come to pass that whosoever shall plead the blood of Jesus shall be free. It shall come to pass. Lift up your voice and plead it. Plead it seven times, the blood of Jesus. Plead it again, the blood of Jesus. Shout it with understanding, the blood of Jesus. Screaming aloud, the blood of Jesus. Say the fifth time, the blood of Jesus. Shout it aloud the sixth time, the blood of Jesus. Say with understanding the seventh time, the blood of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Having wiped out the handwritings, the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Verse 15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public show or spectacle of them, triumphing over them, in it. We're going to be thanking God tonight for the blood that wipes out their handwritings and the ordinances that were against us. We're going to be thanking God for the wiping of the ordinances and handwritings. Ordinances of punishment. Ordinances of sicknesses. Ordinances of diseases. Ordinances of evil. Ordinances of lack. Ordinances of stagnation. We're going to be thanking God that they've been wiped out by the blood of Jesus. Handwritings and ordinances that were written against us. They've been wiped out by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for wiping out the ordinances. For wiping out the handwritings. For wiping out everything that we are written against us. Thank you for making a public show of them. Thank you for disgracing them. Thank you for making a public spectacle of them. Lord, I give you thanks. Can you begin to thank God? Can you type it as we comment, start up tonight, and type it, handwritings and ordinances has been wiped out. 
by the blood. Handwritings and ordinances that were written against me, they've been wiped out by the blood. Come on, declare it. Handwritings and ordinances that were written against me, they've been wiped out by the blood. Come on, say it again. Handwritings and ordinances that we are written against me they've been wiped out by the blood lift up your voice and declare it a handwritings and ordinances that we are written against me they've been wiped out by the blood of Jesus Christ contrary things that we are against me they've been wiped out by the blood of Jesus Christ I welcome you to Blow the Midnight, wherein we're going to be looking at how to be healed by the blood. There is spiritual sickness. There is physical sickness. There is mental sickness. And there is emotional sickness. Spiritual, mental, Emotional and physical. Luke chapter 4, from verse 16 to 18. Luke chapter 4, from verse 16 to 18. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That is emotional healings. Tonight, there shall be emotional healings. Tonight, there's going to be mental healings. Tonight, there's going to be physical healings. Tonight, there's going to be spiritual healings. So, how do you get healed? By the blood of Jesus. I'd like you to listen to me very attentively because while we are teaching, we'll be prophesying and we'll be praying together. While we are teaching tonight, we'll be prophesying, and at the same time, we'll be praying together. John chapter 9, from verse 1. Jesus came into a city. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was born blind from birth. And his disciple asked him, Rabbi, Rabbi, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parent that he was born blind? Now listen, everybody. Listen to me. The disciples were too sure that the root cause of sickness is sin. If we deal with sin, we have dealt with the root cause of sickness and diseases. So Jesus came and dealt with sin. <laughs> dealt with sicknesses and diseases. And a pronounced statement was made from the book of Matthew. He said, by his stripes we were healed. So in the book of Luke chapter 5, he got to a man in verse 20. He got to a man in verse 20 before we pray. Uh, listen, I want to lay a strong foundation before we pray so that when you're praying, we know what we're praying about. Luke chapter 5, verse 20. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven. This man was sick. Look at what Jesus said. 
Listen, everybody. Let's read on. 21. The people, when they heard it, the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Verse 22. Hmm. But when Jesus perceived their thought, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your heart? Which one is more easier to say? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Rise up and walk? Which one is more easier? The most difficult aspect is the place of forgiveness of sin. If we deal with sin, we will deal with sickness. Now listen, listen, listen. Next verse. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I said to you, because I've dealt with the sin issue, rise up and take up your bed, go to your house, go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. This is what I want to let you know. Jesus dealt with sin problem before he started dealing with sickness problem. And the instrument that he used to deal with sin problem is the instrument of the blood. Matthew 26, verse 28. We'll pray with that scripture. We're going to pray extensively. Matthew 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. We're going to open our mouth and declare, let the blood remit me from sin. Let the blood remit me from sin. I want to show you how to be healed by the blood of Jesus. Let the blood remit me from sin. There are people that have experienced emotional heart, heartbreak. There are people that are emotionally broken. They are not emotionally broken because they were doing what God asked them to do. Most of the emotional issues, they come from sin. <laughs> Most of them come from boyfriend and girlfriend. The guy broke my heart. The guy broke my heart. Who authorized you to go into that relationship? The lady broke my heart. The lady broke my heart. Did you hear God before you enter into that relationship? If God leads you into that relationship, he won't break your heart. I have to tell you the truth. If God leads you into that relationship, you will not suffer heartbreak. Heartbreak is a function of sin. It is why you are committing sin, especially sexual sin. The guy has disveging you. You have given the guy your money. And the guy has traveled outside the country. The guy said, I'm not marrying you again. You experience heartbreak because it is not God's will for you. You force yourself into it. <laughs> Tonight, you're going to ask God every emotional imbalance, emotional sickness, everything that have affected me emotionally. Now, some of us may not be in that way. It might be business failure. It might be disappointment in business. It might be disappointment financially. It might be something that is not supposed to happen. Maybe loss of a loved one. We're going to be declaring tonight and say, oh God, oh God, heal me and remit me from every sin. Remit me from, as soon as you are remitted from sin, you will be remitted from that problem. So I want you to begin to declare, remit me from sin and remit me from sickness. Remit me from emotional sickness. You can't even pray again. Open your mouth and say, Lord, remit me from spiritual sickness. You can't even study the Bible again. The last time you pray, was the corporate prayer, they prayed in church. You can't pray as a person again. Individual prayer, you wake up, Father, Lord, I thank you for waking me up. You take your bath, you rush out of the house. Father, revive me and remit me from spiritual lukewarmness. Remit me from spiritual backwardness. Remit me from spiritual sickness. I like you to pray that prayer. Remit me, oh God, from sin. Sin of lukewarmness, sin of every form of complacency, sin of spiritual laxity, sin, sin of every contrary issue. Remit me from sin. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you why you need to pray this prayer. Once the sin issue is dealt with, it is like uprooting something from the roots. The grass, the branches, the fruit will not come up again. Sickness is a byproduct of sin. And the blood of Jesus came to remit us from sin. I'd like you to pray tonight and say, Lord, remit me from sin. Remit me from all kinds of sin. Remit me from wardom. Remit me from stealing. Remit me from all kinds of evil. Remit me from adultery. Remit me. I can't help myself. Remit me from all kinds of fornication. Remit me, oh God, from all kinds of lesbianism. Remit me. Remit me. From homosexuality. Remit me. Remit me from gay. Remit me. That's not the natural purpose that God made man. 
God made man for a woman and it's going to be consummated in marriage. God did not make Adam for Steve. God made Adam for Eve. Remit me, O oh God. I don't think you're praying. Remit me. Remit me. So the blood came to remit us. Not only from sickness, but also from sin. Lord, let your blood remit me from sin. Lord, let your blood remit me from sin. Ask him to remit you from addiction. Things you have been addicted to. You are addicted to alcoholism. There is no how you will sleep without taking alcohol. There is no how you will sleep without engaging in drugs and marijuana. Remit me. Pray for yourself. Someone is about to experience true freedom that comes from Christ. Someone is about to experience true freedom that comes from Christ. Someone is about to experience true freedom that comes from Christ. Someone is about to experience true freedom that comes from Christ. Somebody is about to experience true freedom that comes from Christ. Lord, remit me from sin. Quickly begin to pray and say, Lord, by your blood. I want you to understand how the blood does it. My testimony is a pointer to what the blood can do. I contacted STD, chronic STD, as an unbeliever. And God opened my eyes to the revelation that is in the blood. I started drinking the communion. And I was just drinking. I said, Lord, this is blood transfusion. If sickness is not in his blood... Sickness cannot be in my blood. This is blood transfusion. His sickness is not in his blood. Sickness cannot be in my blood. This is blood transfusion. If sickness is not in his blood, sickness cannot be in my blood. This is blood transfusion. His sickness is not in his blood. Sickness cannot be in my blood. I started taking it. I started taking it. I started taking it. When I went for the last test, which our church asked us to go for, our church, Daystar Christian Center, and the city of Lagos, and we went for the test. They diagnosed me, run all the tests. They could not see any traces of sickness. And the Spirit of the Lord ministered to my own spirit and said, I have overhealed you. Take the message of the blood to your generation. And how do I know? Inside the blood of Jesus Christ, it was screen. The blood of Jesus was screen. And inside the blood of Jesus, there is no traces of sickness. So whenever I take it, I said, whatever that is in his blood must enter into my blood. Ladies and gentlemen, in his blood, there is healing and health. Tonight, as you take it, as you take it, you're going to be activating it in prayer. Lord, there is healing and health in your blood. There is vitality and strength in your blood. As I partake of it, let the content that is in your blood become the content that is in my blood. And whatever that is in my blood, let it be flushed out by your blood. Amen. Whatever that is in your blood, in my blood, let it be flushed out by your blood. Is it my blood group? Lord, let it be flushed out. Yes. Is it, is it, is it, is it cancerous issue? Let it be flushed out. As simple as I'm saying it. That's how it's going to be. Let it be flushed out by the blood. Is it anything that is related to your bone marrow? Let it be flushed out by your blood. Is it whatever that is affecting your pancreas in your stomach? Let it be flushed out by your blood. Does it affect your liver? Let it be flushed out by your blood. Does it affect your kidney? Let it be flushed out by your blood. Are you standing, you know, uh, as a point of, you know, in, in position for another? In your family, your husband, your wife, whosoever it is, let this thing be flushed out by the blood. I told a lady, a lady told me rather that each time she prays, because they are husband and wife, that she will be praying, calling the husband's name as if she's a husband. 
Why? Two shall become one. Two shall become one. Open your mouth and declare it. Anyone that I'm standing in gap for, as I partake of the blood tonight, let that issue in his system, let that issue in her system, in her organ, in her tissue, in her cells, in her blood, let it be flushed out by the blood. The blood flush out diseases. The blood flush out issues. The blood flush out things that are not meant to be in your system. Tonight, as we take the communion, let those things be washed out by the blood and let what is inside the blood let it be what is inside my blood i'd like you to begin to pray it sickness is not in his blood it cannot be in my blood as long as it's not in his blood pray that prayer it cannot be in my blood i can't be drinking his blood and something else will be in my blood sickness is not in his blood disease is not in his blood this going to <laughs> contrary things are not in his blood therefore tonight excuse me i make a declaration those things cannot be in my blood those things cannot be in my blood tonight let there be blood transfusion before we get into the communion table let me show you something from the book of john chapter 6 Verse 53 and 54. John chapter 6. Verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I said to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, he has my life. He has eternal life. I have eternal life. Eternal life cannot be contaminated. And I will raise him up at the, at the last day. Eternal life cannot be contaminated. Tonight, as I partake of his blood, I partake of his nature. Leviticus 17 verse 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of Jesus is in his blood. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. The blood will make atonement for me today. Atonement for my healings. Atonement for my vitality. Atonement for my change of story. Atonement for cancerous issue being taken out. Atonement for every contrary emotional issue, spiritual issue, physical issue. Tonight! The life of my flesh is in his blood. I take his blood, I have his life. I take his blood, take the blood of a donor, give it to the recipient. Whatever that is the content of that blood of a donor becomes the content of the blood of a recipient. When my wife gave birth to the twins, I think so, or the triplets, I can't remember, either twins or tri twins, triplets, tri triplets and twins. They asked her to donate two pints of blood. I donated one. And we got another one. We paid another person that donated. Yeah. Though they didn't use the blood. My wife and I, our blood group is the same. Genotype, everything the same. So I told them, they screened my blood, checked it. They said it's free to go. They can transfuse it to her. They can transfuse the blood to her. Why? They screened the blood. Before God will ask us to start taking his blood, Jesus will ask us to take his blood, it has been screened. There is so many things inside the blood. One of the things inside the blood, I will not tell you all tonight, one of the things that is inside the blood is there is healing in the blood. There is healing in the blood. There is healing in the blood. One of the things that I want you to know that is inside his blood, there is healing in the blood. You know, we sing a song, there is power in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we sing it like this, there is healing in the name of Jesus. No, there is power in the blood. There is also healing in the blood. Take up the communion material, everybody. Take up the communion material as we take the blood. I want to show you something, how to be healed. Take up the communion material and take up also the flesh. Take up the communion and take up the flesh. Take it up quickly. Take it up quickly. I'd like you to understand what we're going to do tonight. Take up the communion. Take it up and then take up the flesh. 
what we're about to experience tonight, it's something that will surprise you. Take up the communion material. I'd like you to pray now and declare, let there be blood transfusion. Let whatever that is in his blood, let it enter my blood. I'd like you to pray that prayer. Let whatever that is in his blood, let it be in my blood. Anything that is inside his blood, one of them is healing health and vitality whatever that is, is inside his blood let it be in my blood you are not just taking for taking sake if the blood of bulls blood of animals blood of heifer blood of calves can do this work how much more the blood of Jesus let whatever that is in his blood let it enter into my life Thank you, mighty God, for the communion we're about to take now. As we partake of his life, we partake of his blood, we partake of his flesh, we partake of his healings, we partake of his vitality. Please take the communion, and I'll tell you what to declare now. Take it, take it, everyone. Take the blood, take it, take it, take it, take it. Quickly, take it. Lift up your voice and begin to declare it. By his stripes that brought out blood, I am healed. Lift up your voice and begin to declare it now. By his stripes that brought out blood, I am healed. I am not here to pray for you. As much as I am praying for you, I am here to lead you into things that will help you for many years from now. I'm praying for you, one. I'm teaching you to, and I'm showing you the way. I will make declarations, but most importantly, I will always like you to open your heart and pray for yourself. Jesus trusted the disciples to pray for him, but whenever he comes around to look out for them, he realized they were sleeping. Don't just depend and entrust your life in the hands of those praying for you in the morning and in the evening. They are leading you. They may not pray how you want it. Pray for yourself, my dear friends. That man cried out and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Nobody, people want to shut him up. Nobody can do that for him. Jesus said, come. He wants to tell you to come. He wants to hear your voice. Open your mouth and pray for yourself. Let the healing power, let the healing power, let the healing power that is in the blood, let all the content that is in the blood, let them find expression in my body. Let them find expression in my emotions. Let them find expression, expression in my spirit. Let them find expression in my mind. I can't fail exam again. I can't be regarded as someone that is dull and dormant and dullard. The blood of Jesus has activated something on my inside. My brain works like the brain of a lenit. My spirit man is activated to commune with God at all times. My body is revitalized with health and vigor and vitality. Come and pray. And my emotion is intact. I am healed. The broken heart and every other thing that wants to be domiciled in my emotion, it is over. Come and pray for yourself. Lift up your voice and make that declaration. Kaniya kut ombro jialaba. Masakati la bakato sondo brokotozia eshanti akataliba to pro zonto kopotoluba masakata tatata klapato zondo brokotozia lia 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 la brojia la makata zanda klipatoza empali akata zanda klitata ba come on pray come on pray you can't be quiet that man shouted and Jesus said, come. He said, I want to receive my sight. He said, take it. Take your health back. Bye! The power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. None of the diseases that was upon the Egyptians, none of them will come upon you. What is in the blood is in your blood now. What is in his body is in your body now. What is in his flesh is in your flesh. You are a partaker 
of his life. You are a partaker of his life. You are a partaker of his life. You are a partaker of his life. You are a partaker of his life. I declare tonight. Let his life enter your life. Let his life enter your life. Let his life enter your life. You can't be doomed with sickness and diseases. I hear the word John chapter 11 verse 2 to 4 John chapter 11 verse 2 to 4 It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrance of oil and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick 3 Therefore the sister sent to him saying Lord behold he whom you love is sick when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. I'd like you to pray. This emotional sickness cannot kill my emotional life. This spiritual sickness is not unto spiritual death. It's not unto spiritual death. Come on, pray. This physical ailment. Is not unto death. It's so that the name of the Lord may be glorified. Begin to declare it. Begin to declare it. John chapter 9. The Bible is speaking in verse 3 and 4. It says, it says, it says, it says it's not about sin now. It's, not, it's so that the name of God may be glorified. I am the light of the world. As long as I'm in this, Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Declare it over your life. God's work shall be revealed through me. God's testimonies. Can you type it, everybody? Tonight, by this intake of the blood, his testimony will be revealed to me. His life will be revealed to me. His vitality will be revealed to me. His health will be revealed to me. Even when he made that declaration, they got to the place. They said, Lazarus is dead. He said, forget it. Did I not tell you, if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. John chapter 11, verse 40. Tonight, declare it to yourself. He said, I believe that this thing has been turned for me for a testimony. This thing has been torn for me. This sickness has been torn for an occasion for testimony. This thing has torn for the glory of Jesus. Said, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Tonight I declare, I shall see the glory of God in my health. I shall see the glory of God. There is marital sickness. I hear the word. There is financial sickness. I declare you healed. Your hands cannot lack again. Put the communion in your hand. Put the little of the communion in your hand. And declare by the blood of Jesus Christ, this hand shall not be empty again. Declare it. Financial healing takes place. This hand shall not be empty. Put the communion in your hand. Put the communion. Take the communion. And put the little in your hand. Put a little of the blood in your hand. Put it in your hand. Carry it. Put it in your hand. By the blood. I am delivered from lack. Put the communion in your hand. By the blood. I'm delivered from lack. Stretch forth that hand. Stretch forth that two hands. I like you to stretch it forth. Stretch it forth. Stretch it forth. I speak forth over your life that anything that have caused any form of lack of resources in your hand, I declare right now, your hand is healed of lack. And from now onwards, I declare mysteriously, business-wise, favor-wise, opportunity-wise, contact-wise, different means, let resources begin to flow mightily into your businesses, into your career, into your life, in the name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, lift up your right hand and say with me, I am healed by the blood. From now onwards, anything that is not in his blood cannot be in my blood. Therefore, I am a partaker of his life, full of health, vigor, vitality, strength, and health. Because I drink his blood and eat his flesh, his life has entered me. Just as they transfuse blood and the content from the donor becomes the content of the recipient. Because I take his blood, the content in his blood is the content of my life. No more sickness. No more diseases. 
no more contrary situation no more emotional issues no more spiritual laxity I am healed by his blood give him thanks tonight give him thanks tonight by faith someone that knows that healing has taken place let's give him an offering of appreciation thank him Abraham Romans chapter 4 verse 19 and 20 Abraham was strengthened in faith giving God glory Abraham did not see Isaac but he was just returning praises glory thanksgiving offering everything to God all right let's give God an offering in faith that it is done Romans are not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb verse 20 verse 20 he did not waver the promises of God through unbelief but was strengthened and faith giving God glory Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 and 5 God speaking there he said I am the Alpha and Omega it is done and God will wipe away every tears from their eyes there shall be no more death nor sorrow nor crying there shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away the sickness have passed away type it now type it now the sickness have passed away or especially spiritual sickness anyone that is spiritually lazy you are healed your vibrancy in the intake of the world and in prayer has been revitalized your emotional robustness your joy your love your excitement your happiness is restored because your face has been gloomy because you are emotionally down now that bodily issue and sickness They've been wiped out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now get back to verse 5 of the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 5. Then is he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Verse 6, this is where I love. I, I, and he said to me, It is done. <laughs> type it, type it as we live tonight. Type it, it is done, it is done it is done congratulations it is done i pray over your offerings i pray over your sacrifices i pray over everything you're given as a point all right to connect with what god is doing here on the platform and i declare it is done remember we'll be here tomorrow for another explosive night by 11 p.m but don't forget from monday 19th which we're going to be starting blood at midnight on our social media pla on our handle on our whatsapp platform by 11 p.m every night and um Blood at Midnight on Facebook and YouTube will be starting by 10 p.m. Once we are done 10 to 11, we move over to Blood at Midnight and it's going to be fantastic. All of us, I want everybody to participate in that WhatsApp edition because it's a specialized edition. What we do um, 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 in Facebook and, and, and YouTube, it's a slight difference from what we'll be doing in our WhatsApp platform. So it's going to be an amazing time. So remember, we'll be... Um, in the comment section, we'll be putting up the link and then click on the link and join any of our WhatsApp group, okay? It promises to be an amazing time. Thank you so much, my dear friends, for being part of tonight's meeting. And I trust him that the healing power is already working in your life. God bless you. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same place. And until then, keep winning by the blood of Jesus Christ. Enjoy the rest of the night. Bye.